good morning everyone hope uh, you all are fine as uh, you all know that we are stuck at our home during this lockdown period for covid 19 but uh, we have to stay at our home and uh, at the same time we have to continue our studies so my name is mona lisa das pgt chemistry of kv barpeta i'm trying to make a video for class 12 students uh with the first chapter of solid state this is the introduction part of solid state so that my students can start their studies so we are studying our first chapter of class 12 that is solid state in this video we will make the introduction part of the solid state as uh, we all know that the common states are solid solid liquid and gas all of us know this solid liquid and gas liquid and gas these two topics we have covered in class 11 and in class 12 we are going to cover this state solid you all know that solids have some properties some characteristic properties by which we can identify a matter as solid what are they they have fixed they have fixed mass they have fixed shape and volume they have fixed mass shape and volume at the same time you know that their intermolecular forces intermolecular forces are very strong intermolecular forces are very strong they are rigid they are rigid very much rigid they are least compressible you all know this still as we are starting the chapter so i am again repeating these all they are very much rigid they are least compressible they are least compressible their melting point their melting point is very high the melting point is very high so these are few characteristics by which we can identify a matter as solid you all know this now here we will learn the classification of solid how many types of solids are there my dear students we will know that how many types of solids are there there are two types of solids one the first one is crystalline crystalline solids and another one is amorphous solids what are they first one is crystalline and the second one is amorphous solids so now we have to identify that how will we distinguish this that which one which type of solid is crystalline and which type of solid is amorphous <coughs> how will we know crystalline that means the substances substances have the constituent particles you will know that all the substances are made up of many uh, many small constituent particles so if these particles are arranged in regular pattern in regular order they are known as crystalline that means these crystalline solids have regular regular arrangements they have regular arrangements of their constituent particles their constituent particles in three dimensional space you will understand this three dimensional space so in 3d space if their constituent particles are regularly arranged that means their arrangement pattern is regular they are known as crystalline but if they do not have this regular arrangement that means if they have irregular arrangements then they are known as 
amorphous solids if they have irregular arrangements of constituent particles in three dimensional space they are known as amorphous solids how crystalline example what are the examples the common salt the common salt what it is it is nacl sodium chloride sugar these all are crystalline salts amorphous like you have glass you have plastic you have rubber these all are examples of amorphous salts okay so crystalline and amorphous we are going to differentiate them few with few properties first one is what first one is their shape first one is their shape in case of shape this crystal line have regular shape regular shape or fixed shape amorphous they have irregular shape or not fixed irregular or not fixed okay second one is that one which we discussed earlier that is arrangements arrangements the same thing here here it is regular in case of amorphous it is irregular okay the third one third one is melting point melting point for this crystalline solids they have a fixed melting point or sharp melting point suppose a crystalline solid has the melting point of 30 degree celsius then it will melt exactly at 30 degree celsius but in case of amorphous solids they have a long range of melting point it in these cases they do not have a fixed melting point it starts to suppose it starts to melt from 25 degree celsius and it will continue up to 30 degree celsius so they have a long range of their melting point they do not have a fixed melting point or sharp melting point okay then the next one <coughs> next one is cleavage next one is cleavage what does it mean the cleavage property like if i'm trying to draw this suppose this is a crystal okay this is a crystal and you are trying to cut it with a knife okay so if you try to cut a crystal with a knife then you will get two surfaces of course you will get two surfaces like that okay and those two surfaces will be smooth one or regular or uniform if we can cut a crystal with knife then the formed surfaces will be uniform or regular that means this cleavage property when we cleave them then they form smooth surfaces but in case of amorphous uh, solids if you cut these faces or surfaces then suppose you were trying to cut it then you will not get the uniform surface it will be ununiform then it will be ununiform you can easily visualize this when you uh, throw a stone into a glass and the glass pieces broke down then you can see that they do not make regular surfaces or uniform surfaces they all become uneven so this is the property of amorphous solids then the next property okay the next property is anisotropy this is very very important and a new term for you a new term for you that is anisotropy what does it mean okay there are few physical uh, there are few uh, properties physical properties like electrical conductivity or refractive indexes when we measure these properties in a crystal from different directions then we get different values try to 
you understand this? Suppose this is a crystal. As you know that in the crystals, the constituent particles are arranged in a defect and in a fixed pattern. These particles are arranged in a fixed pattern. Now, suppose if you were throwing light from this direction to measure a particular a particular property, then it is not getting any barrier. It is passing through the free space. But now, if you are passing light through this direction, then the light is getting these are barrier of the particles. Of course, when the light is not getting any barrier and if the light gets this barrier that means they will show different properties dif properties of different values <coughs> so in the case of crystalline solids when we measure few physical properties then we get different values when these are measured from different angles or from different directions this property is known as anisotropy and these are not same not isotopic not same iso means same as these are not same so this is known as anisotropy okay i'm repeating this anisotropy means phys few physical property or um, in in crystalline solids in crystalline solids few physical few physical properties few physical properties show different show different values when measured when measured from different when measured from different directions directions this property of crystalline solids is known as anisotropy anisotropy this is very important for your exam purpose also what is anisotropy that means crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature and what about amorphous solids they are isotopic in nature because if in contrary we take this uh, arrangement of amorphous solids as they are random as they do not have any fixed arrangement so whenever we pass the light from different directions then they give you the average scenario because in all the uh, from all the angles they will have they will get few barrier and few normal vacant space so it will few normal vacant space so it will this amorphous solids are isotopic in nature okay so our fifth uh, point that is anisotropy in case of crystalline they are anisotropic in nature and in amorphous they are isotropic in nature okay the sixth one that is nature okay crystalline solids we call them as true solids they are solid in a true sense but in case of amorphous solid we call them super super cooled liquid they are not the solid in a true sense they they are assumed that they are super cooled liquid like glass or plastic or rubber okay so these are few points by which we can distinguish between them okay try to recap them we have three common state of matter solid liquid and gas here 
we are starting with the matter solid okay solids are of two type first one is crystalline second one is amorphous okay so crystalline what are they when the constituent particles are regular arrangement in space they are called crystalline solids okay and amorphous means when the constituents do not have regular arrangement in space okay melting point is fixed for crystallines um, for amorphous melting point is not fixed they have a small uh, for crystalline solids a smooth cleavage for amorphous solid uneven cleavage for crystalline solids anisotropy is the nature they are anisotropic and amorphous solids are isotropic in nature crystalline solids are called true solids amorphous solids are called super cool liquid okay so this is the introductory part this is the basic thing of uh, the classifications of solid and uh, in the next video we will come with the classification of crystalline solids again okay we will in this chapter mainly we will deal with the crystalline solid so in the next video we will discuss about the classification of crystalline solids okay till then 